How's it going, everybody? It's Pilot Fame, and we are back with another FPL live stream. And today it is the Game Week 11 preview. Game Week 10 has just finished with the Wolves 2 1 victory over Everton. Came down to the wire, but Jimenez's goal was the one to help Wolves see through to the three points. Uh, Bit of a rough start, or a rough uh, last two games for Rafa Benitez's Blues. Uh, hopefully they can turn it around because they're going to get some heat being a former Liverpool manager. But we will be taking a look at Game Week 10, how we did in it. Um, and part of the title of the show, we're into the top 10K. So we're doing quite good. Uh, we had an awesome week uh, this week. Could have been even better had I got the goalkeeper choice right. And uh, rotating goalkeepers, something, something, shouldn't do it. Something, something, you put this on yourself. But we'll get to, uh, through to that. Uh, I don't even think the bonus points and the substitutions have come in as of yet. So you'll see kind of what the lineup did look like uh, as well. We'll also take a look at our clean sheet differential and prediction picks from last week. Uh, we have the tweet for that. We'll be doing the ones for this week. As well as we'll be looking at our watch list, updating that. And then we'll take a look at what we're potentially doing uh, for transfers and taking any questions that we have uh, in the chat as well. So make sure to check that out. And if you are watching this over on YouTube... Make sure to come check us out live on Twitch. There's always a pinned comment down below on every YouTube video that lets you know when the next live stream is. I know it is a bit wonky for the UK at the moment uh, with the with the time zones because uh, I'm on uh, the EST time zone, um, and uh, you know you you guys. I think you're either one hour back further or uh, i don't know what it is but it's, it's 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 a bit wonky for the next for this game week whereas like some games are being played instead of like 12 30 they're being played at like either 11 30 or 1 30 i don't know let me actually check that while i'm thinking of it um uk time now uk time right now so it's only three hours yeah so everything in the uk has gone back an hour uh, basically, so they're waiting for everyone else in the world to go back in R, and I guess that's part of the, you know Europe as well. So, but yeah, we'll check that out uh, and all the normal stuff that we normally do. But yeah, before we do that, let's talk about fantasy football scout. So, as you can see over my shoulder here, fantasy football scout has a fantastic uh, offer during the preseason, but you still get access to all the same stuff as you normally uh, normally would. Uh, for the Fantasy Football Scout members area. There's Opta Driven Stats Tables, which you see in all of my uh, videos pretty much, as well as during the deadline stream. We often use that as well. I leave all my tables public to all the members that want to use them as well. And you can customize them. You can do all sorts of stuff. There's Rate My Team uh, tools. There's um, comparison player tools. There's so much stuff that you can get in the members area. Exclusive articles as well. There's a video uh, that FPL Mode, as well as FF Scout Mark or Mark Southerns, you might know him as, uh, they do a video every week talking about their teams uh, that's exclusive to the members area only. So make sure to check that all out. There's a link in the about section if you're watching this live on Twitch or in the description below uh, so that you can get access to the Fantasy Football Scout members area. So make sure to check that out. It helps us, it helps you, it's going to help elevate your FPL game. So without further ado, let's see how the team did. So, this is the team up on the screen. So I'm just going to refresh this really quickly, just to see if they've done... They haven't done the bonus points or the substitutions as of yet, but... We will be getting 73 points, assuming that Jimenez, which looks likely, that he's going to stay on three bonus points which will put him at 9. And we also have Mbomo, who did not play at all. He will be uh, being substituted off for Smith Rowe, who got us 9 points. So uh, very, very lucky. Very, very jammy there. Quite fortunate, uh, I would say, uh, on that front. So we will take those points. We will definitely take those points. We had a uh, game week rank, I think, according to the live appeal, of around 63k, which is awesome. Uh, 73 total points. Um, but it mainly came from uh, a few players uh, on the team. If you just if you just don't pay attention to the you know the, the side with you know the, the you know the the, the red and, and light blue shirts. If you just don't pay attention to those, apart from Salah, because Salah's always there, and you only pay attention to the guys <laughs> on the other side, um, the team did quite well uh, when you look at it. And, and it could have got more because I have Ramsdale on my bench with ten points. Thought that you know Leicester would probably score, and I thought that. Burnley probably wouldn't score, but Burnley ended up turning into prime Barcelona. So, but yeah, so we brought in our transfers last week was Ivan Tony in uh, for uh, uh, for Lukaku, who was injured, and Fernandez, who came in as well uh, for the uh, long-term injured Raya. 
Hey, Nito, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Gallagher or Smith Rowe? Um, I don't know what Palace's fixtures are. So if you give me a second, I will kind of take a look at that. Uh, Gallagher. Gallagher. I mean, they're both probably quite good, to be honest. Smith Rowe. For the longer term, I would say probably Gallagher. Uh, how much is Smith Row right now? Smith Row is 5.6, so... Yeah, I'd probably say Gallagher, to be honest. I think with Arsenal, there could be a little bit of a spread of points. I think Smith Row's been fortunate. Like, his goal was quite lucky. Um, his assist was somewhat fortunate, and his goal, his first goal that he scored was, it was deflected. Um, but I would say Gallagher, to be honest, because I think Gallagher is the one that can create things. He's on set pieces when Milivojevic doesn't play. Also, thank you for the follow, Nito. Much appreciated. Um, but yeah, I think Gallagher. I mean, Wolves at home, Burnley away. Um, the only real tough fixture. Um, I mean, you know, Palace could do well against all these teams, to be honest. The only real tough fixtures that they're going to have is, you know, Chelsea and Liverpool, probably. Um... When are they play and they play City, but all the games against the big teams are at home, so they've kind of got majority of the bad fixtures out of the way, and they have a lot of good fixtures. And if he's your fourth slash fifth midfielder, you could just be like, okay, well against Liverpool at home, um, you know, Crystal uh, Chelsea at home. Uh, I mean, Man City they seem to do well against, but um, and then Man United, you probably just find somebody that can play instead of it. Maybe Livermento has good fixtures during that time. I'm not too sure, um, but yeah, I would say Gallagher to be honest. Um, I had Smith Rowe just because he was cheaper uh, at the time, and his fixtures in the in the shorter term were quite good. Um, so, but yeah, and I wouldn't be looking to play like you know him in the next few games here. Uh, but Gallagher, you definitely could. So I'd go Gallagher uh, if I had to choose uh, one of those two. Um, but yeah, speaking of the players that played against uh, Crystal Palace. Diaz and Cancelo not doing too well. Diaz getting just the one point, conceding two goals, uh, not ideal. He's only got two points and one point. We missed all those nice clean sheets. Hopefully City can turn that around. And Cancelo with just the two points as well. He came off before they conceded the second goal, so we end up preserving a point there. Hey, Oliver, how's it going? 79 points. That's a very good game week. That's a very, very good game week indeed. Very, very good game week. I could have had even more points had I had Ramsdale too. I would have had 82 points if I had Ramsdale in over Fernandez and just going with, mind you. That being said, I said it on stream, so I'm not going to go back on it. If I would have got in Fernandez as I did, I would have played him over Ramsdale. If I would have got in Ben Foster, I would have played him over Ramsdale as well. So I can't say that I would have played Ramsdale. So, but yeah, I could have potentially had more. And Smith Rowe also nicely comes in for him, Bomo, so a bit of bit of luck there. Ivan Tony, only just the two points. He could have had a couple of assists as well. A uh, bit unfortunate there. Uh, hopefully they can do some more damage versus Norwich. Snow says I benched Ramsdale. Don't worry. We're in the same camp. We're in the same camp. Unfortunately. Um yeah, I, I I don't really like I I thought Fernandez was 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 really, really bad, actually. Um Actually, while I'm thinking of it, let me actually... Who did they have? Did Brentford have another goalkeeper? Uh, that's not who I wanted to look at. Brentford versus Burnley. Here we go. I don't even know who their backup goalkeeper even is. Who's Brentford's backup goalkeeper? Oh, this dude, Matthew Cox. Well, if he starts playing game and game out, he's 4 million. He could be useful. Um, what, would I want to make another goalkeeper transfer? Probably not. But I guess Fernandez is probably going to play for the time being. Um, which is uh, interesting. Yeah, Ray is out long term. He's out like four or five months. But um, yeah, for some reason, Brentford's defense just went completely to... just Just left him. 48 points this week, Fernandez. Uh, yeah. His name is Rea. No, Rea is their number one goalkeeper. He's injured. 
Um, they had two other goalkeepers. Gunnarsson, who's on loan until January. And they have Fernandez with a Z, as you can see here. Alvaro Fernandez. He's now their current playing goalkeeper. And their backup goalkeeper to him now is some dude that has the number 41 shirt that plays. His name is Cox. Uh, C-O-X. Um, some dude that looks like he's 12. Uh, that's got blonde hair. <laughs> Um, Fernandez played under 21s for Spain. Yeah, I heard that he got a cap for Spain or something like that. Um, so he must be decent. I guess he's good with the ball at his feet, not necessarily making good decisions. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he, he, maybe it's just a communication thing. Maybe it's just a first game jitters or something like that. Hopefully he can do well. I mean, if they concede versus Norwich, that could be a bit of an issue. But I expect clean sheets versus Norwich and Newcastle. They should be fine. They should be fine for those. Uh, I would think, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, should be okay. Um, but, yeah, Chelsea defense. I mean, I'm looking like a genius on the wall card. Game week eight, we brought in Reese James. He got just the one point, and since which he's got uh, 13 and 21. Uh, so I feel a, bit, feel a bit fortunate with those returns, for sure. Uh, but he has been uh, he has been playing, uh, playing quite well. Um Ben Chilwell, again, another good return. He's gotten 15, 12, and 8. He's been on an absolute tear for us. Um, so we are we are very happy uh, with him. And I said when I got them in, in game week 8, I said if they get 3 starts out of 4, I will be happy. So if Chilwell happens to get benched for Alonso this week, I'd be more than happy because that they played versus Burnley last season, and that's kind of what Tuchel said. Um... But, I mean, Chilwell's got me more than enough points. I think 45 points, uh, that is, uh, 20, no, 35 points. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it's just ridiculous. Even over, what, four games, if you divide that out, it's like eight points or something crazy a game or something like that, whatever it is. No, what's the 35 divided by four? How many times is four? It would go nine times. So it's like just under nine points a game, which is crazy. Um, and then plus I get whatever bench player I would want if Chilwell didn't play. Um, but Reese James has been excellent um, as well. He was great. Glad to have both of them in my team. Um, in midfield, I mean, our midfielders did well. Nine, ten, nine, because Smith Rowe is going to come in. I'm just going to refresh it to see if it has fixed itself. Nope, it hasn't. Had no bonus points yet. But uh, and Bomo didn't come on. Uh, they were down. Uh, so we kind of got the best situation there, uh, where basically Brentford were either going to be... Uh, I was hoping Brentford were either going to be way ahead or way behind to where they didn't want to bring on Mbomo to, like, potentially risk him. Uh, and they didn't, so which is quite good. Uh, so Smith Rowe is going to come in for uh, Mbomo, uh, which is good. Uh, we got the nine points from him. Again... Some unfortunate circumstances. Rafinha definitely deserved to return. He probably deserved double digits. He was by and far the best player on the pitch. Um, he was men versus boys. Because uh, uh, Norwich were not good again. Uh, Salah, just the assist. Uh, close to 71% owned now in the entire game. The guy has returned literally in every week except for game week two. Um, so if you're one of the 30, 30 to 29% of the players that don't have him... Um, you should have Mo Salah. <laughs> um, just put the armband on him and see what happens. It does good things. Jimenez got a very fortunate goal. He's going to end up with three bonus points as well. Uh, most likely. Uh, so he did well for us. And then Ivan Tony with just the two. Rams still being on the bench is annoying. But I said, like I said, I wouldn't have played him. Same Axman and Brownhill, just the two points. So our bench order was correct. Wondering if I should go Tierney to James, but might roll and get in Son next week. Um... The thing is, there's going to be a lot of a lot of managers going for Chilwell or Reese James this week, and they could easily be benched. Um, for Burnley, I think you're going to need creativity. So I think James probably plays, but like I said last time out, um, when they played Burnley, Chilwell didn't play and Alonso did. So see who they put out in the Champions League and then make your... Um, make your guesses from there. Because if you see a team where Alonso's starting... Um, and, you know, Aspilicueta starting at wing back, maybe Chilwell and James are going to come in for the weekend, which is very possible. Um, right. 
Now, with that being said, let's check out how we did for our predictions. Because we haven't been doing well on these. We have not been doing well. So let's take a look. Uh, yeah, so the last few weeks, game week 6, 7, 8. 8 and 9, we've gotten 2, 3, 3, and 4, which is not ideal. It's slow progression. Um, but yeah. Chilwa was at the press conference today. That doesn't necessarily mean he's starting, though. Um, I've seen guys in the press conference before and they haven't played, so. Um, prime example was literally, uh, it was one of the United players. I can't remember who it was, but it was the United player. They were in the press conference and they didn't play. Um, I think it was Scott McTominay, I want to say, for one of them. But yeah, if you don't know how the predictions and stuff go, if you want to join along with us, um, basically, if you get the exact score right, you get three points. If you get uh, the result right, so, you know, had I predicted Arsenal 1 0 and they won 2 0, uh, then I get one point. And if you get anything else, uh, it's zero points. Um, so, Arsenal versus Leicester, I know I got this one wrong. Uh, we predicted 2-1. And Arsenal won 2-0. They were very good. They had a very good first half. I think Arsenal are doing quite well. And I think they can continue that run. But we'll see how they play versus tougher opposition. Because they have had a bit of an easy ride after the start to the season. So nothing doing there. Uh, Brentford versus Burnley. I mean, Brentford came to uh, came to, uh, to uh, Burnley's turf war. I just said, we'll just concede a bunch of goals. The goalkeeping was a bit suspect. So I'm a bit worried about Fernandez, But Burnley did play quite well. Uh, I think Matt Loughton got a goal and an assist, which is, you know, unheard of. Uh, so, nothing doing there. Liverpool were winning 2-0 and then conceded two goals in the second half. Brighton definitely getting the better of Liverpool in the second half for sure. Liverpool could have been far and away out of sight in the first half. Couldn't close it out and Brighton ended up coming back. So, wrong there. City Crystal Palace again. You <laughs> got this one wrong as well. I predicted 3-0. Palace just seemed to do well versus City. Um, and, you know, Gallagher, as we mentioned, getting a goal. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, a concern for City, I would say. They've lost their last two games, which isn't ideal for them. Uh, Chelsea 3-0 over Newcastle, so we got a, the exact score right. Predicted something like that might happen. Uh, Southampton versus Watford, I predicted 2-1 in favor of Southampton, ended up being 1-0. So we got that one right, uh, in terms of the results, so one point. United 2-1 over Spurs, uh, got that one partially right. United ended up winning 3-0, didn't think it would be that convincing. Uh, same with Leeds, 1-0 over Norwich. Uh, Leeds got a goal through Rafinha, and then it was quickly equalized through Oma Bamadeli off a set piece. And then Leeds getting a somewhat of a savable goal from Rodrigo um, into Cruel's arms, and then underneath him into the goal. Uh, could have potentially kept that at a draw, uh, but Leeds getting the victory, so got the one point there. Uh, West Ham blew it wide open uh, late on in the second half versus Villa. They capitulated late on after relentless running around, uh, chasing shadows in the second half. Um, Villa need to sort their, uh, their, their their side out because I just don't know where they're going to go from there. They're going to get tucked into a relegation battle if they're not careful. And Dean Smith could be on the chopping block. Um, so... Yeah, uh, but we get, did get the result right, so we got the one point. And then Everton and Wolves, we predicted draw, so nothing there. So we got one, two, three, four. Three plus four is seven. So that's close to about right. We got half of the results right. Um, the other half wrong, but we did get an exact score, so seven uh, is not bad. We're back to game week five form, uh, which is around the average mark. In terms of the differentials, clean sheet, nope, not to Leeds. Uh, Melier, uh, don't think he got an assist or anything like that. Nope, he did not. So that wasn't very good. Uh, Rico Henry, did Rico Henry get any assist? No, he didn't, so that was bad. Uh, Yuri Tielemans, did he get involved in the Leicester goals? Nope, because they scored zero. Uh, and Richarlison, I don't believe, assisted on the... Nope, it was Keane, apparently, that got the assist on that. So, uh... If you follow our differentials this week, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I got uh, zero out of five right, which is a, which is a not ideal. So if you didn't follow those, you probably did good. Uh, so yeah, bit unfortunate uh, on that front. Has this refreshed yet? Okay, so it's got Jimenez's bonus points in there, but it hasn't done the auto subs yet. All right. 
So, moving on to this week's predictions. Let's see. We're going to take a look-see at the fixtures this week. Remember, it is a Friday deadline this week, which means you have to have your team in uh, ready to go uh, by... What's that? So that's 3... 3.30, 4.30... What's that? 8... 8.30? Am I right in saying that? I can't do math. Just look at this. Do you see this part here? Just go and look at that for you. That's the deadline. That's the deadline right there. I can't do math. Um, but what I can say is that the first game of the week is November 5th. And that is Southampton versus Aston Villa. Um, this is going to be a bit of an interesting one, to be honest. Uh, Villa are not in good form. Um, and Southampton has been ticking along um, okay in the last couple of games. They seem to have been getting just enough um, to, to get through. Um, you know, Che Adams scored a very good goal. Adam Armstrong came back and the team is doing well. Barroja has been doing well. Um, and Livermento has been absolutely outstanding. So I think Southampton might be able to take this one. Uh, I think that Southampton... I, I normally would go a 2-1 here. Uh, but for some reason, um, I think Villa could just get absolutely ran over again, potentially. So I'm going to say Aston Villa are going to get uh, beat somewhat convincingly. Uh, I don't think Aston Villa will necessarily score none. I think they'll, they will get one. Uh, but I think Southampton will, will definitely get the better of uh, Villa this time. I'll go 3-1. Man United versus Man City. Now, if United plays um, their defensive shape like they did versus um, versus Spurs, they can get at City. Uh, but I think they still did make some positional errors uh, with that. It just was covered up by the fact that Spurs weren't very good, uh, basically. Um so I think, uh, I think it's going to be a very close affair. Um, I th think United will probably get one on the break. Uh, I think City will still open United up at, uh, like probably once. So I'm just going to go again in these big games when it's close to call. I'm almost tempted to go no no, but I think one one is probably about right because I think City's defense isn't as good as what it was at the start of the season after the Spurs game. But I think United will probably get one on the break if they play that system. If they play that system, they should be okay um, for the most part. But then again, City could exploit the uh, you know the gaps that United play in a you know un you know charted waters in a system where they haven't been playing it for very long, and City could open them up. Uh, Brentford versus Norwich. This should be quite straightforward for Brentford. Um, I think they're going to be quite attacking. I think defensively they'll shore themselves up. Norwich haven't been looking very good. Uh, I'm just going to go with Brentford two 0 uh, I'm also going to say the same thing for uh, Chelsea as well. I think 2-0 is probably about right. Um, maybe uh, one of the uh, front men and maybe another wing back getting a goal. Hopefully it's Chilwell or Reese James. That'd be great. Crystal Palace versus Wolves. This could be very, very interesting. Uh, Palace like to attack. Wolves like to counter. It could be very, very interesting to see who dominates the ball. Crystal Palace being at home, you would think that they're going to be the ones with the majority of the possession. Wolves don't really mind that too much. They can play both, and I think they're good enough to create. It's just a matter of can they put it away, but Huang and Jimenez have been doing quite well up front. So I think that it could be a very interesting game. I'm personally going to side with probably a, you know, a score draw of some kind. I think both teams are good enough for at least one goal. Uh, I'm going to go with an actual, uh, a 2-2, two -two actually, uh, in that one. I think that both teams can concede goals. Um, you know, Sp Palace ha has been prone to a mistake, as have Wolves, but I think both of them are good enough to get at least one goal um, through just good play, basically. Um, so that's what we're going to go with. Uh, Brighton versus Newcastle. I think Brighton probably keep a clean sheet. Uh, and get back to getting clean sheets, especially at home. I think they'll probably score just a one, and I think I'll go with a one-nil. 
which puts Newcastle in a bit of danger now. Um, they're going to need to sign some players to keep themselves out of the relegation zone. And I think if they do that, uh, then they could potentially keep themselves out of there. And then you're looking at the likes of Watford and Norwich, uh, maybe even Aston Villa, uh, maybe Leeds is in there as well. Uh, that have to potentially look at themselves and say, we need to get ourselves out of here. Same with Burnley. Burnley got themselves a nice win. Maybe Southampton could slip down into that as well. It could be very interesting. Arsenal versus Watford. I think they should be quite fine with this one. At home, 2-0. They don't have Troy Deeney, so nothing to worry about. Everton versus Spurs. It looks like um, Antonio Conte is going to be uh, in uh, the position by the time... Um, Everton uh, uh, allows them to, to come into town, as it were. Um, so, yeah, it looks like Fabrizio, uh, Fabrizio Romano has just, uh, he says, uh, Antonio Conte to Tottenham, this is uh, 29 minutes ago, uh, confirmed, and here we go, the contract until June 2023 will be signed on Tuesday. The verbal agreement is now complete. He's back in the Premier League. Uh, Fabio Patrizzi, who is the director of football at Spurs, used to be the director of football at Juventus, uh, who was with Conte at the time, uh, wanted him since June and changed Conte's mind. Incredible work. Hashtag Conte. So, Antonio Conte looks to be the manager of Spurs. Uh, and will be probably uh, for this Everton game, um, certainly on the Sunday. So that could mean that Spurs set up in a back five, which could cause Everton some problems because it seems like it doesn't matter what formation that Everton play, they're prone to just mistakes at the back. Um, and if Kane and Son are firing and Everton's defense, I think they can do quite well. And if there's one thing that Antonio Conte can prevent Everton from doing, as long as Calvert-Lewin's out, um, it's prevent goals, so I'm going to go with the Spurs 2-0 win. I'm just going to go with that and see how it goes. Um, again, it's assuming that Conte actually does play the 3-5-2 system and plays, a, you know, in, in, in which you can have Romero as, like, the the, the middle of the defensive, uh, like, the, the three uh, center backs with Son and Kane as a front partnership, uh, and Dumbele, maybe Lo Celso and Hoybier as, like, the midfield three in the, in the five, um, so we'll see how that goes. Leeds versus Leicester. I think this is just all out attack versus counter attack. And I think usually that goes to Leicester's favor. Um, I could probably see Leeds probably getting one goal, but I think Leicester will be too good for them, uh, on the day. And I think they'll end up winning it, uh, somewhat comfortably. I'm going to go with a three, one, uh, Leicester win. And then West Ham versus Liverpool. This one could be quite tight. I think Liverpool definitely will concede because uh, West Ham, I think, are good enough to get a goal uh, versus them. It's, you know, they didn't show, like, you know, Brighton don't typically score very many goals and they conceded two to them. So I think West Ham at home could definitely be up for getting at least one. But I think Liverpool will ultimately win. They'll bounce back uh, and they'll get the win uh, at the London Stadium. Moving into the clean sheets, I'm going to go with Arsenal. They're playing Watford at home. Watford haven't been scoring too, too many goals, although they scored five uh, versus Everton. But Arsenal's defense has been very, very good. Um, Arteta, after those first three games, telling us to trust the process, and it seems to be working out quite nicely. Uh, Arsenal making their way uh, up the table uh, and should do quite well in this one. I'm going to go with Arsenal for the clean sheet. Uh, in goal and in defense, I've gone with a Brentford double up. As much as I have said that uh, Fernandez. Uh, wasn't uh, wasn't convincing. I'm going to go with him because I think that Norwich aren't very good and he's the goalkeeper for Brentford. So hopefully he keeps a clean sheet. Uh, and then I'm going to go with Pinnock as well. He was the lower of the two. If I was going to go for another one, it'd be um, Ayer, I think is how you pronounce his name. A-J-E-R. Uh, he was the one that came back from a hamstring injury. He was the other center back that was playing, I think, over Zanka. Um, so, but I'm going to go with Pinnock. He's 6.4%. I know I'm supposed to do 5%, but it's close. Um, and I have another one that's close that, that's around 6% as well um, that we're going to say uh, in the forward slot. Uh, in midfield, I've gone with Leandro Trossard, 1.4%. He's playing Newcastle, scored last week as well. Could be a good differential pick. I think he's 6.4 million. So, very, very cheap. Uh, and then lastly, yeah, 6.4%. Harry Kane, funnily enough. Uh, if Spurs are good for two goals, Kane could be one of them. So I would say that uh, 
you know, Spurs, especially with the fixtures that they have coming up as well, they should be firmly uh, on the watch list of uh, a lot of uh, managers. As we can see here, they got a nice run of fixtures coming up uh, versus Leeds, Burnley, Brentford, uh, and Norwich teams that like to concede goals uh, over the last few game weeks. Son only 17% owned, Kane only 6.4% owned. You get on in the Murley, you could be doing some serious damage um, to uh, a bunch of the other managers. Uh, and I think uh, Kane could be uh, quite good uh, versus Everton. I'm not sure his goal scoring record versus Everton, but I believe if they're leaving space in behind uh, like they were versus Wolves, Son could be very, very good. I'm, temp I'm half tempted to kind of just get him in uh, because he'll be playing in a front two in Conte's 3-5-2 system if he goes with that. And basically what would happen is Son would be like the kind of runner in behind and Kane would be the one that kind of drops a little bit deep. So Son would be basically the guy getting in towards in on goal. So I think Son could be the one to go for it's just a matter of who do i take out because i don't want to take out rafinha because he's been doing well uh, and his fixtures are still you know decent enough um i don't want to take out embomo unless he's injured injured uh in which case then we can just get rid of him and just have ivan tony uh, and smith rowe's been doing well and he's got watford at home so i kind of want to play him um versus watford and maybe against newcastle in a couple weeks time uh, as well, so I uh, don't want to necessarily get rid of him, he's been doing quite quite good for us, um, but if Mbomo's definitely out, and he's out longer term, or whatever, and like, he was on the bench, and like, you know, he could have came on, but maybe not really, and then he like, re-aggravates his injury, or something like that, then maybe I can go straight for Son, because I have enough money to just go from Mbomo straight up to Son, and then I would just play Son uh, over Mbomo, the only thing is that they do play Norwich, uh, so the double up could be on there, and I could save my transfer, see how uh, Spurs play under Conte versus Everton and then go from there um but yeah that's a little bit of a little bit of a, 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 a little bit of a preview there for the potential transfers and whatnot um where were we let me just refresh this and see still hasn't done the substitution as of yet that's fine we'll close that um so yeah that's our clean sheet and differential picks we will put those over on Twitter and in the uh, YouTube community section as we normally do so make sure to check those out uh, moving on to the team currently as it stands so this is the team as we set up currently for game week 11 so we're going with five at the back as well we're going Christmas tree formation once again we've got Fernandez in goal versus Norwich um, on the triple up here um so we're hoping for a norwich clean sheet because that would be great um i do think that both ramsdale um and um fernandez will get clean sheets this week it's just a matter of who's going to potentially get more bonus points um brentford seemed to score one maybe two goals with arsenal could score a bunch which would mean ramsdale would be further down maybe fernandez gets some bonus points from playing out from the back ramsdale is very good at that too but maybe our Arsenal go up, you know, 2 3 0, and then they concede one goal. Because Watford's still on the attack, are still quite good. I mean, Everton showed that if you don't pay attention, you could be in some serious trouble. But uh, I'm going to go with Fernandez just because he's playing versus Norwich. Anyone versus Norwich is good. Play him all the time. Um, then we have the double Chelsea defense. If uh, James plays or Chilwell plays, I think. I think I'm expecting one of these two to not play uh, versus Burnley. Most likely Chilwell, if I had to guess, uh, which is why we have Rafinha as our first sub. Um, and we'll get to the subs in just a second. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold going to be playing as well. Um, they're playing West Ham. The last time they played versus West Ham, uh, Salah scored a brace um, at the London Stadium, if I remember correctly. I just remember two hoofed balls uh, that went down, uh, down the line to Salah, and he was just in on goal, basically. Diaz and Cancelo, I'm still a bit torn here. I don't really know uh, if I'm going to start um, both of them. I kind of just have them in there just for the time being. Um, I could just play Rafinha over Diaz most likely. I think uh, Cancelo is more likely to potentially create something, if any. And if they get a clean sheet, then he's most likely going to be, you know, going to be slightly higher in the bonus just because of his creativity. So I think I would play Cancelo over Diaz. 
uh, on that front. Um, but I would probably look to potentially play Rafinha, maybe even St. Maximin versus Brighton as well. Uh, you know, he hasn't been getting much uh, over the past few weeks, a bunch of twos. Uh, so we kind of missed the boat on his returns at the moment. He was only supposed to be a two-week thing, but, you know, maybe we can um, we can uh, look and see what we could potentially do with him um, for the game weeks, uh, game weeks coming up. Because he does have some okay fixtures uh, around, yeah, in, in these two here in 14 and 15. Maybe keep him for Norwich and he could do some damage. Definitely don't want him during this because uh, he plays some pretty good teams there as well. Um, in midfield, we got Smith Rowe, Salah Captain, and Mbomo. I'm seeing if Mbomo's fit and available. We want to play him. If not, then maybe we bring the Son transfer forward um, and then go from there. That could be something that we do as well. Because what I'm looking to do is um, either buy game week 12, have at least one of the Spurs assets in, and potentially both. Um, we'll talk about that when we get to the transfer section. But if these guys are all fit, I think Smith Rowe and Mbomo over Rafinha. Um, I think Leicester's defense out of these three is probably the best. Watford's hasn't been great. Norwich's is definitely not great. Leicester's can be good uh, from time to time. And I think Rafinha, just because he has a home fixture over St. Maximin, um, who's versus a, a you know much better defensive team. Um, and then up front, we got Jimenez and Tony. Uh, Tony's got the vice captaincy at the moment just because he's playing Norwich. I expect Salah to play versus West Ham because they are a very good outfit. Uh, I don't think Salah starts versus Atletico Madrid. I think he can be rested there uh, personally because I don't think Liverpool need anything more than a draw. And I think they can definitely get a draw without Salah. Because they have Jota, they have Mane, they have Firmino. They should be good there. He'll probably come on and get some minutes. But I think they should be okay without him. Uh, versus Atletico. Because uh, they don't need to do anything special uh, to get a draw. Versus Atletico. Basically, you can easily stop them scoring. Um, because typically, they only start to pick up their attacking force uh, when you come on to them. Uh, or when they're behind. Uh, so as long as the game's even... You should be okay versus Atletico. At least Liverpool should be. Um, and also they won't have Griezmann, which is a big uh, a big plus for them as well. And yeah, and then with the bench, Ramsdale, he might burn me again. But I think, you know, Fernandes versus Norwich. I mean, if he doesn't play and the other guy plays, then cool. We get Ramsdale off the bench. If he does play, then we should expect a clean sheet. I think both of these are, like I said, predicted clean sheets. Who's more likely to get, you know, potential bonus points? It's kind of tricky. I expect them to both get around a similar score. Fernandez gets six, Ramsdale gets seven, or vice versa. It's going to be around similar points if they're both keeping a clean sheet, which is what I've expected. Uh, first sub on the bench, like I said, Rafinha um, over St. Maximin just because of the home fixture and his form as well. Um, so if you know somebody does get benched or whatever, then Rafinha is the likely one to come in. And then I'm still debating, do I play Rafinha over Diaz? I think that's most likely what we're going to do. But we'll wait and see what the midweek brings. Because if Diaz is, like, injured or something, um, you know, and, and he's out or, or whatever, you know, we can, we can react to it. So nothing is final as of yet. But this is the lineup as it stands now. Um, let's take a look at our, uh, our watch list. So... This is our watch list uh, of players uh, as it stands uh, right now. So we've got in goal, we've got Mendy and Ederson. Again, those are two fine goalkeepers. Aspilicueta, I'm actually going to take off the watch list. He hasn't played the last two Premier League games. And we've got two very good defenders uh, for Chelsea. Uh, Henry, I'm going to take off the watch list, even though I think he's a good differential. I just think that uh, Brentford, you know, not, you know, getting clean sheets, um, in their last several games uh, is something to be uh, worrisome about. And Rea being out could potentially be bad. Uh, Tierney, I just you know being injured is a problem for Tierney. He's going to be removed from the watch list. Uh, Mane is still going to stay on there, having scored again. Son's going to be on there, could be coming into our team. Gallagher, same thing. Tielemans, I think we'll keep on there as well. Bakayo Saka, we'll keep on there as well. I think he could be okay still. Uh, Grealish, we're going to take off. I just think that the you know the FPL returns have not been great for him this season. Just the one goal, two assists across 10 game weeks. I think if you're going to go for somebody in an attacking 
since Foden or Jesus could be on there. Cornet is someone I definitely like over the last two weeks. Three goals. He's been doing very well uh, for himself. I'm not sure if he came off because of an injury or if it was just a tactical substitution. But this run of fixtures could be quite good for him as well if Burnley are going to be playing more attacking. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne is on there as well. He did come off early, so I think I'm going to remove him. I just think he's too expensive, uh, to be honest. Um, and Elise, uh, he came off the off the bench and got himself uh, an assist, so we'll keep him on there. He seems to be kind of in and out of the team at the moment, but I think longer term, you're going to see Elise on one side, Zaha on the other side, and then either Edward or Benteke, most likely Edward up front. Uh, Jamie Vardy. Uh just the one pointer uh, for him with a yellow card versus Arsenal 45 minutes after coming off injured versus Brentford I think we're going to take him off the watch list for now uh, I think we'll wait until he gets better fixtures and if he starts doing well there we can look back at him Huang I think played well uh, we'll keep him on there Firmino I think he played well again so we'll keep him on there just to just for one more week to see how he does versus West Ham Callum Wilson I just don't like the way Newcastle are playing personally. They do have good fixtures, so we'll keep them on there just as a, you know, kind of to pay attention to. Ian Acho uh, and Edward will keep on there. I think Ian Acho being subbed at halftime is worrying, but I think that could have just been something that they needed that was a system change, and he was just a repercussion of that. Edward will, will, you know, he hasn't gotten any returns in two. If he doesn't get a return versus Wolves at home, then we'll start to, con, you know, consider taking him off. Kane, we're going to keep on there as well because of the new manager. Uh, Broha, uh, we'll keep on there to see because he could be quite good. Uh, and Daka, we'll keep on there because he could potentially be a Vardy uh, replacement and has done well when he's come off the bench. Uh, for. Uh, players to add to the watch list. Uh, Arsenal. Um, I think we're going to actually add uh, Gabriel to this list because he, he seems to be, he, he always seems to come up with some type of set piece threat. Uh, likes to accumulate a lot of bonus, so we'll add him on to the watch list. Uh, Tavares could be interesting if Tierney is out longer term, so we'll put him on there as well. Uh, Aston Villa, no. Brentford, no. Brighton, uh, Leandro Trossard is one that we could add to the watch list. Uh, Brighton do have some decent fixtures. Uh, as well as Tarek Lamptey could be very interesting. So we'll keep an eye on both of them for the time being. Uh, Burnley, we already have Cornet on there as well. Uh, Chelsea, no. Crystal Palace, uh, we already have Gallagher. Everton, no. Leeds, no. Uh, Leicester, no. Man City, no. Uh, Man City, uh, actually, we, we, we do have one addition. That's going to be John Stones because with Laporte being suspended, and he's going to be suspended until November 21st, so uh, it's just the one-game suspension, but we could see John Stones potentially just keep his place. Um, so we are going to add John Stones to the watch list. This could be a much cheaper way into the city defense. Uh, Man United, uh, I'm going to put uh, a couple of their assets back on the list. So Marcus Rashford definitely being one of those. We'll add him. Um, David De Gea could be one as well. Five million as a goalkeeper could be fantastic. One to look out for as a potential uh, transfer for the wild card. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Ronaldo, put him back on the watch list. Uh, Edinson Cavani is also somebody we're going to add to the watch list as well. Um, and we'll keep an eye on Bruno Fernandes as well on the watch list. This is just future-proofing some stuff, but United beating Spurs. And we'll get to see a little bit more if United change system or whatever. Uh, Newcastle, no. Norwich, no. Southampton. Um, we're actually going to put McCarthy on the watch list because he could be a very interesting goalkeeper. The fixtures are a bit mixed, um, but can be quite good. So we'll keep an eye on him. We already have Livermento. Uh, Armstrong and Adams, not too convinced yet. I want to see when Broge is back, who's going to be playing there long term. Uh, Spurs, we have Kane and Salt on there. 
Another player that I want to keep an eye on is Region. Uh, he could be very good as a wing back. Um, because I think he's going to be the wing back. Um, so, yeah. Uh, at least on the left hand side. Uh, Watford, no. West Ham, uh, no. Uh, and Wolves, no. We will hang on to them. Do you think I should start Livermento or White this game week? Um. Livermento or White? Livermento's got Aston Villa at home. Ben White as Watford. Probably Ben White. Probably? Do I think both teams keep a clean sheet? For some reason, I see Southampton conceding. I think Ben White is more likely to keep a clean sheet versus Watford, but Livermento is probably more likely to get an attacking return because he will be charging down target side. Um, so he plays right back, right? I think he plays right back. If he plays right back, then he's going down Matt target side, which is good. Um, so, yeah, I think... I think a lot of managers will be playing Livermento, so I think you probably just go with Livermento. I think it's still close because, you know, White does play versus Watford, but, I mean, Villa have just not been good, so Livermento could get something there. So how many players do we have in the watch list? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30. So we've got 30 players on the watch list. Usually we like to keep it 25-ish players, but it's fine. It's fine. So yeah, some transfers, some potential transfers that we're looking into. So we, Son and Kane are the main ones um, that we could potentially be looking at. Um, we might get a glimpse of what Antonio Conte's team is looking like, because I think Spurs play... Uh, in the Europa Conference League this week, if I'm correct in saying that. They play some team I've never heard of before, uh, but they do play a team. Um, and that could be Antonio Conte's first game, technically. Um, but I don't think we're going to see very many... Um, very many of the regular starters in that. Um, what is the standings in that group? Uh, Spurs aren't doing well in that group, so I think Conte might want to might want to win that, and he might want to play his first team just so he can get you know get used to them, and then take take good form into the Everton game. So we might see honestly full strength. Um, because Spurs are three points behind the group leaders in Wren, and two points behind the team that they're playing. So uh, they might need, if they get a win, because uh, Wren will probably beat this other team, uh, Mura or whoever they are. Um, so it just depends on if they just want to sack off the Europa Conference League or not, to be honest. Um, before we look at transfers, price changes. Potentially Gallagher is going up in price. Huang, uh, Salah, uh, and Livermento, uh, Reese James, uh, Phil Foden potentially uh, are all close with uh, Pulisic, Firpo, Melier, uh, Tarkowski, Mings uh, potentially going down in price. But these are all estimations, uh, so make sure to take them with a pinch of salt. But if I was going to go with a transfer potentially this week, I could easily, if like Mbomo is not going to be fit, uh, like I said, we could do Mbomo straight to Son, and then see how we do after the international break. The only thing is that I like to go into the international break with two free transfers, uh, which would be quite nice. Jimenez uh, has done well for us uh, since we've got him on the wild card. Uh, two returns in three is not bad uh, for a total of 15 points. So he's basically averaging an assist per game, which is okay. Uh, we'll definitely take that for sure. Um, St. Maximum might be the one to go, um, and then Bemo, if he's injured, like I said, we could get rid of him just this week, but ideally I'd like to go into the international break 
with two free transfers uh, and then assess. That's when uh, Spurs' you know defense or Spurs' uh, you know fixtures get uh, get really good for for quite a while. Um, and we'll have to see how that goes. If Son looks to be the main guy uh, f uh, when they play versus Everton, then we can just do just the one straight transfer to bring in Son and roll again. Um, or we could potentially look to you know transfer some players out and get the double up on Spurs. We can even just go, you know, Diaz um, down to uh, a Livramento type player. Um, and then, uh, upgrade, uh, St. Maximan, uh, to, to Kane. That could be something we do after the international break. Uh, if we wanted to get rid of, uh, later on, uh, and bring in, uh, Son, we would be just short if we brought in Livermento. Uh, we would need a forward that's a little bit, uh, on the cheaper side. Um. So we'd have to get rid of somebody else. But we do have the option to do either or uh, if we hold a transfer after the international break. See how, um, see how Conte's team plays. If he goes full strength um, on Thursday, because I believe they play... Yeah, they play Sunday. So they still have, they have a little bit more of a break. But if he goes full strength, they are at home as well. That's another thing. So there's no travel. Um, if he goes full strength just to see you know how they're going to do... Or how he's going to set them up um, if he's in charge at that time, then um, then it'd be very interesting to see. So I think it all kind of stems on that uh, personally. If I like what I see and Mbomo or whoever is not like you know fit or available, uh, then maybe um, it would be uh, it would make sense to uh, to to get rid of uh, somebody basically um i'm not opposed to taking a hit either um the only thing that long term that could be a bit of an issue is let's say i got rid of saint maximin um we got rid of uh you know if i use both my transfers um in uh game week 12 we keep Jimenez for 13 and then get rid of i mean before burnley at home would be bad but let's say just for argument's sake we did and we got rid of Smith Rowe as an example. We can get we can get you know the two the two guns from two big guns from Spurs. If we went uh, uh, super super cheap, in defense and in uh, uh, in attack. So, but the only problem with this is that we'd have to play all four defenders. We'd have to play four midfielders, and we played two up top every week. So we'd be playing a Brentford duo every week, which is not what we ideally want. It's because we want the cash to be a little bit more spread out. So I'd rather have a Livermento uh, in this spot. So we might have to find another way of doing it. Uh, and that may come down to the fact that Rafinha might be injured or leads aren't very good. Um, that could be another thing as well. Um so, because Arsenal and Brentford do rotate decently well. Um, so maybe it's a situation where, you know, when Smithrow has Liverpool and Man United in 12 and 14, uh, we play Mbomo versus Newcastle. Uh, I mean, Spurs doesn't look very good, but, you know, maybe we have to play him in that if we wanted to get rid of Rafinha, um, who does have very good fixtures. But, again, it's not going to be feeling good to play Rafinha in those fixtures there. It doesn't necessarily the best of run afterwards. It's it's this like little little run here where it looks quite nice uh, for him later on in the season. So Rafinha could be potentially on the chopping block. It's it's because we do have a lot of money in defense, but I think that's kind of warranted. Uh, I think Trent's fixtures all the way up until and including 26, he's basically mandatory. Then there's a potential reason to get rid of him, potentially. Uh, and then get him back for the end of the season. But double gamings and stuff could dictate that. Reese James and Chilwell could have eventually get rotated. We'll have to see. Uh, and they could be a bit of a risk going into the Christmas period. So maybe we just take one of them in there uh, into the Christmas period. Because their fixtures are okay. Um, you know, Leeds should be decent. Uh, Everton should be decent. Wolves could be a bit tricky. 
Villa normally should be tricky. Brighton could be tricky. And then they play City and uh, Liverpool after the Christmas period. Uh, they also have Watford and United uh, coming up soon with Leicester uh, as well. So again, could be a bit difficult. So we'll have to kind of wait and see uh, on that front. But players that are potentially on the chopping block uh, going forward. And Ben Murphy's still injured. Uh, Smith Rowe eventually in the next couple of game weeks because of his fixtures. Um, Ivan Tony could be on there as well uh, because, you know, just we need returns in FPL and he hasn't got one for a long time. Um, and we brought him in for these these few runs, like this these couple run of runs. Like if he doesn't get anything in this, he could be just gone, gone. Um, St. Maximin could be one. Like I said, Tony could be one. Rafinha could be one. Uh, Diaz could be one as well. Um, so those five are the ones that we're looking at. Uh, to potentially get rid of. And ideally what we want going into the Man United fixtures. If Man United's fixtures pick up uh, and are quite easy. And United are doing well again. Is ideally we would want uh, the likes of uh, Luke Shaw who's quite cheap. Uh, we would want Ronaldo back. Uh, and then we'd probably want uh, the likes of Rashford in midfield. Because I think he's just that good. Um, this could also easily just be Son if we want to keep him. If he looks like the Spurs guy uh, that's going to do well. Because their fixtures alongside United's up until, you know, like game week 25 included is ridiculous. They play Liverpool and Chelsea once each. Uh, so, yeah. And then United's from, you know, 15 to 27 is ridiculous as well. Um, so if United are keeping clean sheets, Shaw could be quite good. Um and then in midfield, if we keep just restore Rafinha, we have a cheap forward, uh, and then we'd have to work out kind of the rest of things. Uh, maybe Shaw is not the one we go for, but you you understand what I'm getting at here. Maybe Jimenez is a cheaper forward or something like that. I'm not too sure, but uh, that's what we kind of have to be looking at. Is those that Spurs run of fixtures, and that United run of fixtures. Conte's coming as the manager now, and that could mean. Uh, FPL points from Spurs players. Also, uh, Region at 5 million could be great as well. We just have to kind of wait and see. So, ideally, uh, I want to see what Spurs do on Thursday. I want to see um, if United keep with the same system uh, for Man City as well as uh, Atalanta, who they play tomorrow. So that's going to be interesting to see. We're going to see what City team turns up uh, versus United as well. That's going to be interesting. Uh, and we're going to have to play the patient game over the international break as well. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Chelsea, if they keep keeping clean sheets and Chilwell and Reese James keep playing, they keep getting attacking returns, they, you know, they can't be dropped. Is Alexander-Arnold super essential? Over the, you know, longer run of fixtures. I mean, West Ham could be tricky. Arsenal should be fine at home. Southampton, Everton, Wolves, Villa, Newcastle, Leeds. Those all look quite good. Like, these, this this run of fixtures is actually really, really good for Liverpool. But, um, you know, they've started to concede a couple of goals over the past, um, the past, uh, you know, uh, you know, a couple of games uh, at home. Um... You know, Man City, obviously a very good outfit. Uh, but, you know, Brighton, conceding two goals to Brighton isn't ideal. They have been smashing teams up. And it's just a matter of, is Trent going to be involved in that? Because if Trent's just getting six points, we can probably find defenders that get six points every week for way less than 7.5 million. It's a matter of, is he going to get in the attack and return? So, if, if, you know, if Trent's getting six points and Van Dyke's getting six points, maybe Van Dyke's better to go for because he's just less money. Um... That may be something that we go with. If Kanate is going to be starting game in game out in the Premier League and Matip's going to be in the Champions League, maybe we go for Kanate because Kanate is way cheaper. Uh, it's just a matter of is Trent going to get those attacking returns? We don't know. Um, so we'll have to wait and see because if Trent gets downgraded to, uh, let's say, a, a Livermento, um, Diaz gets downgraded uh, to. Uh, uh, I won't go Mankia. Let's go with somebody. Uh, that's, we'll go with Ben Ben White as an example. Um, I mean, then you're looking at a whole boatload of money uh, that you can go for. Um, 
you can compensate not having Trent by going like a Jota or something like that. We can get, you know, we can get Son in perfectly fine. No issues there. We can get rid of St. Maximan and when we're close to Kane uh, at this point, just point three off. Um, so let's say we didn't, you know, if we didn't go for White and we did go for Mankia, who is playing games, uh, that's something we could go for as well. And we still maintain Tony. We have a much better team structure. It's just we don't have Trent. Um, you know, you can do a lot with 7.5 million. You can. Uh, so it's a matter of who are we going to sacrifice. Um, our defense is quite beefy, as we've said. And we do like that. Uh, but maybe it's Diaz is the one that kind of gets taken out. Uh, and then, you know, we have to work around who can we, who are we going to downgrade. And which player is going to look better. Maybe Kane and Son isn't the one to go for. Maybe the wingbacks are what we go for at Spurs. Like, there could be a situation where Reguillon is constantly feeding the ball in behind to, uh, you know, the runners of Endombele and Son, as an example. Like, Endombele running from midfield and Son running in behind. And Kane's just there being the assist of the assister or something, or just getting assists uh, where Son's getting all the goals, which is, you know, then we just go for Son. Um, if Kane's only getting this, like, they score three goals, Son's getting two goals, um, and an, uh, and an assist, whereas Kane's just getting just one assist, then you, you definitely go for Son. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what system Conte uh, wants to play. But, yeah. Let's see. Have they updated the... They still haven't updated the uh, the substitutions, but that's fine. Uh, but, yeah, this is the team as it stands now. So, we got Fernandez with a Z in goal. Uh, versus Norwich at home. James and Chilwell uh, versus Burnley at home. We got Trent away to West Ham. Diaz and Cancelo currently in the team versus Man United away. Uh, Watford at home for Emil Smith Rowe. Uh, Salah captain versus West Ham away. And Buemo and Tony, who has the vice captain, uh, versus Norwich at home. And Jimenez versus Crystal Palace away with Ramsdale on the bench with Rafinha, St. Maximan, and. Uh, brown hill as our one two and three sums so yeah that's gonna do it for the preview for game week 11 uh let's move over to fantasy football scout and tell you a little bit about that before we sign off so with fantasy football scout you get access to a bunch of different things in the members area including up to driven stats tables uh rate my team tools and all sorts of wonderful things in there that are going to help elevate your fpl game check the about section or the description below on any youtube video to check that out it's going to help elevate your fpl game so now let's move over to the big screen Thank you all for watching. If you are watching the VOD, make sure to come check us over on Twitch Live. We will be doing uh, a deadline stream as well. Uh, it's going to be on the Thursday. We're going to be doing that at 7 p.m. EDT. So that is, I believe, uh, four hours behind current UK time. So if that's, let's say, I think the UK time is just gone uh, midnight. So for um, EDT time that's uh, 8 p.m. basically is when we'll be done so at 11 p.m. we'll be starting UK time which is a little bit better uh, for those in the UK I know it's late but it is uh, earlier than normal because normally it's midnight uh, start time at least for a couple weeks it'll be nice uh, so yeah make sure to check that out there's a pinned comment down below on every uh, one of my YouTube videos to let you know when the uh, where the link is uh, for the stream as well as when we'll be going live so make sure to check that out as well and uh, make sure to like, favorite, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until the next one, take care.